time to keep your appointment with the Wicker Man. Hello, Art Potters, and welcome to another helping of Mr. H's Art Pot. You join me today going round looking for the locations for the film The Wicker Man, and our first stop is at the Ruined Church. Now, in the film, this was supposedly Summer Isles Church, which had uh, fallen into disrepair because the people weren't using it. And uh, we'll go inside now and we'll take a little look. But uh, this is where Edward Woodward breaks that cross and he puts it on the altar. So let's take a look inside, shall we? Well, this is it. This is where he entered and he looked aghast, Sergeant Tower, at uh, the way Christianity had fallen into this, you know, it had just fallen away here on, on supposedly Summer Isle. Uh, obviously, this, this has been an ancient church at one point and uh, it's an ideal location, really. I can't make out whether that tombstone was used as the uh, altar or not, or whether they sort of set that up just for the film. Because I've not watched the film for a while, which is uh, rather silly, really. But we've not got Cody where we are, because we haven't got any Wi-Fi. So I couldn't watch the film before I started doing this. But I'll probably splice little bits of the film in to show you that uh, these are indeed the locations. So we're going to have a look around the outside of the church now. I don't think you saw that in the film. You just see where supposedly Sergeant Terry comes in. And I can't work out whether it was this entrance or the one at the back. There's a plaque over the door here, so I should imagine that was either taken down or covered for the film if they used this entrance. So we'll take a look around the outside now, because there's some really ancient tombs in this uh, church here. As you can see, there's the sign over the doorway explaining that this was an old kirk and it gives you some information regarding the uh, minister. Like I say in the film, that was probably covered up or taken down. As I said, there's some really ancient tombs. I mean, this one here. Obviously, this one's uh, somebody who was quite notable bit of a modern door on it. Little mausoleums. You only usually see those in sort of Highgate Cemetery over in England. As I don't think they use much of this churchyard in the film. It was mainly the inside of that church. But it's atmospheric properties. It's a lovely day today. Take a little look around the other side. Now, whether this church is still consecrated ground or not, I don't know. What denomination it is, I don't know either. You 
Yeah, I think it was the other entrance that they used. As I say, I should have watched the film really, shouldn't I, before making a film. There you go. I seem to recall this particular grave here being uh, featured in the film for some reason. Then again, that might just be my memory. Here's the school house that Sergeant Ellie visits to try and find Ron Morrison's name on the school register. As you can see, it's just a simply a cottage. This is also the area where the Maypole dance scene takes place. Right then, that was uh, Anworth Church. So we're now going to go off and uh, in search of the wicker man's legs. The stumps of them were supposed to be there, although I believe somebody's uh, stolen them and put them off back in uh, 2006 or something. But you can still see where it was supposedly cemented in. So we're now going to go and have a little look and see if we can find that, which should be on the bay. And we'll see where Sergeant Tower met his doom. Well... We've come in search of the uh, wicker man's legs and unfortunately we're still searching for them. Now there's a quick moral story to this one. Whenever you're out in a boat with your other half, have you ever been lost and not known where you are? And your missus has always said, ask him, ask him, they're real, no, go and ask him. And you say, no, and blokes don't, do we? And there's a reason for that because this bloke told us it would they were down here. We've walked two bloody miles and couldn't find them. Hey, they're doing there. No, they're not. Anyway, enough of my morning. There's a little World War II uh, defence bunker, and by God, are these walls thick. I mean, look at that. Now, what he's here for, I don't know why this is defending this particular point, but obviously, given uh, the size of it, they must have thought it was worth defending. And it's only a narrow doorway, and there's still some of the original uh, gate on that. As you can see, I'm a big fella, and I'm sort of shoved in like this. We'll get inside of this. There's not much room in here. And this is where there would have been the firing point. I don't know the actual number for this one. There was all given a, an official number, an M, whatever. What this one is, I don't know. Maybe somebody who's watching this uh, film could actually tell me. But this isn't what you're interested in. We're not interested in World War II rubbish today, are we, folks? We want to find these legs, and I think there was the other way. And I'd be very, very, very annoyed if there was. Right, onwards and upwards. Carry on on this trek. Well, we found them. I was, uh, I was right. They was on the other side. So if you're watching this, uh, Mr. Scott's block, I found them. You didn't. Anyway, these are the uh, wicker man's legs. Are all that's left of them. Obviously, they didn't really burn Edward Woodward. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been able to go on and make the excellent equaliser in the 80s, would he? But uh, they actually did add two wicker men's. They had a big one, which uh, they set fire to on the hill. And they had a smaller one. Now, this is where the feet to the smaller one was. Now, these stumps was actually higher than this. They would be about up to here. But some bugger in 2006 cut them down and stole them. But, uh, yeah, this is a bit of filming history here that we're uh, looking at. Some, they actually put in here, I think it's PC, 1972. And take a closer look at that in a minute. But, uh, yeah, this is where he met his doom. And... Uh, in this little area. It's a shame really if somebody's actually bloody stolen them when you come to think. Whether they've actually been sold on the black market or not, I don't know, whether they've ended up at the back of somebody's fire. But uh, I mean as you can see, they were quite wide. I knew they would have had to have been. At the end of the film when you see uh, the head drop off against the, the sunset sky, it was this one that they actually did it at. There we go, PC, 1972. 
obviously the film crew that set this up here uh, carved that in. Now what they, they did as well, they kept it very secret from people when they was uh, making this film. They didn't want anybody seeing it and they chose this like rather remote area because it gave the idea of being a, a backward place. You know, and uh, remote. They would still hold on to its so old traditions. Now many people actually think it was filmed on an island and it wasn't. It was mainly filmed at the Isle of Whitton, which isn't an isle of such, it's just part of the coastline. As I say, it's, uh, it gives that impression of being a very bleak place. The film crew did a good job in finding this. I don't know if you can see that iron, that piece of iron that's stuck up out the rock there, that islet. I'm wondering if that would have had a guy rope attached to it, to the wicker man, to stop it falling over. And there's a closer look at that iron stake with the eyelets in it. As you can see from the concrete, it's the same sort of concrete that the legs were set in, so I would say it's probably from the same time. And over there is where the wicker man was actually setting concrete, so yeah, I should imagine that's what it was for. And this is uh, the actual cave where Sergeant Tower comes out. In reality, it isn't a cave. It's just a hole in the ground. Well, the film does give the impression that it is a, a cave. Quite clever, the trickery of uh, Hollywood, really. Now, this little area here, these rocks is where they run Sergeant Tower against before they actually push him into the wicker man. Did I do it right? You did it beautifully! We're now in a little cove just below the wicker man's legs and there's some like concrete blocks with iron in the middle of them. And I wonder if those were part of the uh, original guy rope system to keeping it in place. Right then, our next stop is Culzane Castle, which was Lord Sum of Isle's home. And uh, we'll take a look at that one. So, off we go. We're now at Culzane Castle, which uh, was the exterior for Lord Summer Isle's house in the film The Wicker Man. Now, it has changed a little bit since the film. As those trees weren't there in 1972, you had a clear view from here, straight out across the bay. The idea was to show as much of the sea as they could in the film to give it the impression that it was actually based on an island. But yeah, this little bit was uh, was his home, supposedly. You see, his experiments had led him to believe that it was possible to induce here the successful growth of certain new strains of fruit that he had developed. So. With typical mid-Victorian zeal, he set to work. Now, unfortunately, I can't get a then and now shot, as I'd need to be where that Land Rover is there, that SHB one, to give you the exact uh, scene as it was shot. As I say, it's a pity those trees are there, because it would, it would just look like it was in 1972, if they hadn't grown. Yeah. Sorry, Hot Potters, this is the best I can do without going in and asking them to shift this vehicle. As you can see, the sea beyond. It was very cleverly done, the film. It, uh, it did make it look like it was on an island. You wouldn't know that all these locations are, you know, miles and miles apart, really. Some of them are about... This one here is about an hour's drive, hour 30, from, uh, from Whitton. We'll take a little look at the castle and uh, a little bit, give you a little bit more. I don't know what bits was actually used in the film totally, 
or not. And uh, and then then this is the last location we're going to do because uh, they can't put that many in them. The, the others are just little shops here and there. The, these are the three main ones: the church, the where they burned the wicker man, and uh, and here at uh, Lord Summer Isle's home. So that's it. That's I hope you've enjoyed this little tour of uh, our Wicker Man locations. So until the next time, as always, bye bye for now.